Hey everybody, Pastor Matt here. I thought I'd come to you from a different room uh, rather than you always having to look over my shoulder into all of those books. Um, those are my tools, but at the same time, we want you to be able to still keep engaged with some of the rooms that are here in the church as a way for us to be able to look forward to being able to populate these rooms in person uh, when this lifts. So I wanted to spend some time talking to you about what that looks like. What, what is this going to look like with this um, lifting of the, uh, the, the stay-at-home order, at least a bit of the stay-at-home order? Um, I'm going to just leave it up to you to look and see what it means about, uh, you know, other businesses and other sectors of society. What I want to look at and, and talk to you about is you know, what's this mean going to be going to mean for the church and really not going to change us that much because we really can't have any more now in the room than in 10 at a time. So that's going to that's going to affect us. Um, it might actually be able to help us a little bit in our times of worship because right now we've scaled back to where there's only five people in the room. But we're still going to evaluate that because we want to make sure everybody's staying safe and, and staying well. But some of you have been asking, well, what's it going to look like when everything lifts and we're able to, uh, to get back together? Or maybe if it's not completely lifted, what's it going to look like when um, there, there's more of a lifting and say we get to where 50 people can can meet well. Well, okay, then we're going to be in business. We're going to have actually some options and opportunities for us to, to be able to gather back together again. So what's that going to look like? Well, it, it will mean multiple services because even though um, the ideal, I think for many of us, and I apologize for this chair, it is just deadly uncomfortable. But um, while, while we all would prefer to be able as much as we can to meet all in one service, um, I do think that something is better than nothing. And so what we would end up doing is likely going and having multiple services. We do know, uh, at least from some surveys that we've seen in other churches, we do know that probably some of you who may be senior adults and may be a little bit more concerned about health and may be a little more reticent into in, in getting back into the flow of things and being around a crowd, we totally understand that. And I want to just assure you that even when everything is lifted, we are still going to pour all that we can into the technology that we've been utilizing while you've been at home. In fact, we're going to keep keep moving it forward as much as we as we possibly can. Because now we realize that um, as building-centric as we have been, and I'm going to talk about that in a little bit, but as building-centric as we have been, we realize that um, we've got to be reaching out not only with ourselves to our neighbors, but we've got to re be reaching out with technology as well. There are people that are connecting with us that have not um, that, that have not stepped into a church in a while, but they've been connecting with us this way. And I believe with all of my heart that this is where we've got to go. And it's, going to, and it's something we've got to seriously, seriously evaluate as far as where we're putting our resources. But that's another, another story for another day. So if we end up having multiple services, we would probably allocate, you know, we would, we would be asking. We live in America. I get it. But we would be asking, you know, maybe certain Sunday school classes to come to a certain, um, to a certain service. We would be asking other Sunday school classes to come to another service so that there would be plenty of room for everybody to be spaced out and be able to have 50 people in a room, but there would be enough elbow room to where families could sit together but still sit apart from, from other families. It would also be a way for us to make sure that we're utilizing um, entrances well, that there would be a dedicated entrance, a dedicated exit to where people are not entering and exiting you know, at the same time, still being able to keep a little bit of distance. So we've got to make sure that we're cognizant of that. Um, also, I, I would just say that we need to continue to do all that we can to be connecting with and, and caring for and loving our neighbors and loving those that are on Facebook. I know that uh, I've been reaching out to some people that I hadn't reached out to in years, and there seems to be a receptivity. To some of these things, there seems to be a receptivity to um, having these conversations, having the care being extended to them, whereas before everybody was kind of doing their own deal and doing their own thing. And, you know, I haven't got time for this. I haven't got time for a relationship. I got to go and do this other stuff. Um, and so we've got to make sure that we're maintaining that, that loving our neighbor is still a very, very high priority, even when everything begins to move and to work. So 
uh, the last thing I wanted to talk to you about, uh, this is just the, the best way that I have to be able to communicate. Maybe one day um, I, we, we can take some question and answers because we, we can begin talking about this. But if you think about our building right now, I mean, we um, o- over the years, we have really um, relied on a building. And I believe that there is a really good reason for that, because there's a sense of permanence when a church, church planters want to have a space, a building that is theirs. That's the ideal. And so when they end up, when we end up having that, then what we end up doing is uh, there's a sense of permanence, but then there's also a sense of upkeep. There's a sense of stewardship that we've got to make sure that we're keeping up with this building. And one of the things that we have to recognize too is that even when we are using our building a lot for meetings and worship services and Sunday school, small groups, whatever that may be, really the most we use it is about, oh, maybe four or five hours a week. We have a, we have a group that meets, RDOs meets um, in our building, and so we're able to be grateful for that and to be able to help them to utilize that so they have a sense of space as well. Carla and I are here 40 hours a week as kind of a missions hub to be able to help you and a ministry hub to be able to help you. But, you know, in reality, what we're seeing here is that ministry can still get done. Meetings can still happen, but we don't have to be as reliant on a building as, as we used to be. And I'm telling you, this is good for us. We have gotten so used to a certain way of doing things. I mentioned to our deacons where it's like we're, we've gotten used to like a cookie cutter type of, of, of way of doing things where you know, there, there is a Sunday, Sunday morning Bible study, church, and then we have a business meeting once a month, deacons meeting once a month, and then we have certain meetings during the week, and then we have another time on Wednesday, and it, it, it's kind of our rhythm. And we were wanting and are wanting to continue to have that rhythm as much as we possibly can. But at the same time, we have to make sure that we are utilizing and making the rhythm rather than the rhythm making us. Because there are other times that we can meet. I believe 1031 on Sunday morning is, a, is an excellent time for, for us to be able to do that. But we don't have to just have our small groups here. I mean, it's more convenient. It's easier. But we, it, we, we can't say, well, it only counts if it's here in the building. Or we can't say, like with your giving. I mean, many of you are starting to utilize the online giving a lot more. Thank you for that. But we want to tell you that it, if you give online or you give here or you give by writing a check or you give by you know going through your bank, I mean, it, it, it all counts. There's not one way that's better than the other. And I'm telling you, even when we end up getting back, um, I don't see us passing plates because as someone said, you got 100 people in the room. What happens if you're that 100th person where, where 99 other people have handled that plate? Are we really in a position to where we want to to be able to have that happen where we're passing things uh, about like that? You see, there's more than one way. My, of course, our grandmothers used to say there's more than one way to skin a cat. Yuck. But there's more than one way to do things. It's not about the the form of what it is. It's about the function. And sometimes the function of it can take different forms, but still be honoring to God and still be fulfilling the commands that he's given us of being able to worship together, to connect with each other, to join the mission, to be able to give generously. Going and ministering now is is maybe looking very, very different for us. All I'm saying to you is this. We've got to lock in on the priority of Christ and his word and sharing the gospel and strengthening each other, observing the ordinances. These are the non-negotiables. Everything else is negotiable. Everything else, sometimes our methodology begins to take some precedence over our theology. And methodology is a method. It's just a way of executing our theology. But over the years, those things can be adjusted for the good of, for, for the good of everyone around us and to the glory of God. So I appreciate all of you who are keeping... Um, uh, an open mind about how we can, about what church is going to look like and what church is going to be like. Um, keep us in prayer, but um, also keep yourselves in prayer as well as we begin to go into this new season 
uh, fresh and ready and revived, ready to see God move in all that he's doing. Thanks a lot, everybody. Talk to you soon.